Hello everyone, I'm back with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be up against uh, Hoang An. The map is Frosty Hour, and then of course, before we start, make sure to subscribe, smash the like button, and ring the bell icon to be notified of any content coming out from my channel. Let's go! Alright, so we go fast forward a bit as I try and collect those containers and develop my base at the same time. Now, if you may have noticed, um, I have level 2 vehicle factory upgraded before the HQ2 finishes upgrading. Okay, now this is in preparation for me to get that armadillo. And if I got like enough resources, I'll build that special vehicle factory, but most and foremost, the... Avia Factory, because Dragonfly Skin is actually mo mobile and is good against early infantry as it has a machine gun, and then of course it's good against hammers as it has a missile. And then of course the wasp and the porcupines uh, based on the resources that you got. Okay, there you go. HQ level 3 as I got enough resources to get it. Super container appeared in the middle of the map right in that little circle garden-ish thingy. Now here comes the confederation. I'm going to have to get into formation to intercept those. Now I got like uh, initial riflemen attacking from the sides as you guys can see right here. Waited for that Cerberus to activate the jump ability and then I'll hit it with the acid strike and then focus all my units into attacking that Cerberus as he has he barely has anything on the ground to defend or attack with that Cerberus. Keep in mind that the Acid Strike or Acid Burst increases the damage taken to an enemy unit that's been affected by the Acid Strike. Now he has like a Typhoon around here focused on my Wasp and I'm going to have to use my Wasp or Micro my Wasp away outside the range of that Typhoon to reset its target. As you may have noticed, the Typhoons change its target. I'll use the Dragonfly to chase after that Cerberus. There you go. And again, another Typhoon popped out. I'll focus my uh, Armadillos to attack the Hammers. He's going X Facility level 2, so this is really not looking good here for me, as he can obviously start the production of that Seraphine. Now, he's trying to micro his Hammer in terms of uh, destroying my Porcupine, preventing me from defending successfully against a Seraphine. Although it's not yet in production, it will soon be. Another Typhoon, uh, Typhoon popped out here, and then I'm going to have to move away as the passive has already been activated. We don't want that uh, Wasp to be destroyed, and ooh, Seraphim now production. Newly produced units will have to retreat as of course, I'm going to have to prepare myself in order to defend that Seraphim rush. So he can either attack right here on the side, or here, uh, right around there. Okay, so fast forward by a bit. And as you may have noticed, I put my dragonflies at the sides of my base to gain view as to where the Seraphine will come from. Meanwhile, going HQ level 4, research facility or hero facility level 2, and then a vehicle factory level 3. Now anything that can attack both on land and on air will be positioned at the sides of my base, as you may have noticed. There is there is less um, units around here since of course this uh, vehicle factory is maxed out and a Seraphim could not really take it out with both the passive and active ability activated unless you have class 12. Okay, more porcupines and uh, dragonfly here in my end. Keep in mind that I'm using the dragonfly here to act as an additional firepower and mobility as they cannot really obstruct the uh, land army composition. Now, by default, the Cyclones will be the target of those Dragonfly and Porcupines, but as soon as the, uh, I saw the Seraphim along with the, with the Cyclone, I actually used or double-tapped my army here and then to select them and attack the Seraphim instead of the Cyclone. Keep in mind that the Seraphim can actually destroy some units, but that's completely fine since the investment made investment made for the Seraphim is actually more costly than that of one Armadillo and one Dragonfly. So it's still a win situation for you since 
Uh, getting that Seraphim out also delays his base development by a bit, so he needs to cause serious damage with the Seraphim to make it more beneficial for him. Otherwise, it's a lost cause. Now, that Seraphim has a range of 9, and with an Avia attack boost, they do have the same speed as my Dragonfly. But the Dragonfly cannot really outrange the Seraphim, since the maximum range of the missiles or the rockets is 8. Adding another special vehicle factory for later on, producing Chameleon and Mammoths. Super Container projected to appear around this middle section of the map. I'm going to have to somewhat scout him and I saw a vertex coming this way along with the seraphim so he's not really gonna do much here since I have like porcupines and uh, those vertex are like very very stingy as to destroy my stuff like the dragonfly <clears throat> okay now if you may have noticed my units ignored that cyclone because I specifically ordered my porcupine and dragonfly to attack the seraphim and the not the cyclone because by default, um, the Dragonfly and Cyclone, or the Dragonfly and Porcupine, will attack the Cyclone by default, but instead of the Seraphim. But if you order them around to attack the Seraphim, they'll ignore the, the uh, Cyclone, obviously. I got that Super Container around here. Good Vertex Micro from Ho Wang An. Okay, switch to Air Raid. Fast forward a bit, Leviathan's already out. Okay. Now I spread my units apart here to avoid an effective bombing run in the event that he may actually have Thor, since I do lack that scout there. Okay, here we go. And for some whatever reason, I was live here and that Seraphim just knew where the dragonfly was. And you know dragonflies are actually better at seeing things. They do have the same visual range. And uh, that's just weird that he knew where to attack. Alright. Putting my uh, J Jaguar's Chameleon at the back. Porcupines at the front. Along with one Dragonfly. As it's the least expensive unit I have. With the most view. For being the least expensive. Instead of a Porcupine. Since if, a, if four Vertex attack the Porcupine. It will be destroyed. Now if they attack the Dragonfly. And the Porcupines can fire back. And the, their Vertex has been destroyed. That will be a win-win situation for me. Okay, I got like a lot of meat bags here as you guys can see. Okay, got like my Jaguar's Chameleon Porcupine at the back of my uh, army. Okay, a scout here confirming what he has. I saw level 3 Avia Factory in there. So I'm already expecting Thor's. Now if you may have noticed, I'm not leaving my base unattended as I built uh, anti-air here. To of course... Um, be able to defend against the Vertex uh, attack coming from the side and or Seraphim and so on. Okay, Super Container appearing right around here. Oh, and he's gonna go in attack. Porcupines, of course, to prevent that Seraphim from, from, you know, like, dealing damage. Here we go, spreading my army apart. Wasp already activated its skill. Acid Strike, then the Nuclear is gonna drop off. There you go. Boom. Now, that is a lot of Thors. Now, I've switched to um, Air Raid Boost. But for some reason, he knew where my army was. And, uh, well, that's a good bombing run. Okay. And so, he's going to retreat. And, uh, as you know... Zeus using the rockets alone ain't really that good against any units unless you got like 20 Zeus rockets firing at a single unit or a single target. Okay, fall, falling back here for a bit. Reposition my army. Of course, I don't want to get crumped, uh, clumped up and then get bombed accurately. Okay, scout again to see where his army is located. Activating the chameleon now. Leviathan is here. Switching to uh, common attack boost. I say have multiple uh, units here. Okay. Cerberus jumping. Mammoth firing from afar, if you may have noticed. 
dragonfly to somewhat uh you know act as a meat bag however the dragonfly here is not on point and there you go okay using a recovery boost to recover the hp of my leviathan and other units that's been bruised up if you may have noticed i did put the armadillo right there as of course it will tank most of the damage moving my chameleons around and then another acid strike or acid burst followed by the nuclear of the leviathan bam although it's not really a direct hit it still caused a huge damage on those units that are affected by the acid chameleon already ran out of energy but thanks to the mammoths dragonfly and jaguars i did focus my uh firepower on that solaris that is not covered by the shield Meanwhile, here's what happens when you double when you just order the typhoons to attack a moving avia target outside its range. They'll move to chase it. Now, those Thors, there's like seven Thors here. I did cancel that um, mammoth that's been be that's been produced. Okay, as I said, by default it will target the cyclone for anti-air. Cancel the uh, wasp production. And then obviously that Seraphim will die. That's actually a very good move. All right now. And so he barely has anything here to do or any units at all. I'm going to have to try my best and lay waste on those at, on that X facility while his stores are refueling. Okay. Mammoths are now after or just uh, beside or behind my army. There goes that one newly produced Thor, the 8th Thor, as he has seven earlier. X facility is went down, and now it's time for me to scour, since of course those uh, Thors may have already been refueled. Okay, retreat here for a moment, using the recovery boost to recover the HP of my Leviathan, keeping it from dying. And uh, Miss Micro here from me, as I have uh, plenty of ghost touches. Now I'm going to have to take this opportunity and attack. Spread my mammoths apart. That's what's good about the mammoth. You can spread them apart to avoid any effective bombing run. Using a raid boost. Okay. Four Thors used to kill, to destroy three units. And again, four Thors used to destroy two units. The vertex here, just one vertex. Okay. Now, if you may have noticed, I moved my army, majority of my Jaguar porcupine at the uh, top side, a little bit upwards, and used the mammoths only to attack anything that can be attacked from afar. Okay, and so, he's trying his best to defend himself here and gain his footing. However, I'm not going to allow that to happen as I try and use those dragonflies to chase after the zoos. And again, spreading my army apart. Mammoths at the back, Jaguars at the front, and uh, I'll have my Leviathan right around here. I'm going to have to retreat for a moment there with the Jaguars since I'm expecting a bombing run. Use the Mammoths with the Dragonfly to destroy the factory, as the Mammoths will have to focus on the factory and the Jaguars or the Dragonflies to keep those Zeus from coming after the Mammoths. That was a very good bombing run from those stores. And there you go, I'm actually sieging his base more effectively now. I've already destroyed one avia, one airfield, and now I'm going after that um, avia factory level 3. There you go. And at this point, it's clear as day as to who will win this battle. Now X facility is being produced along with the bunker or a rocket tower, and I'm not going to allow that to happen. Bam! No more Thors for you, or at least not <laughs> not being able to bomb because they'll have to refuel for they have moved to another airfield. There you go. Now if you may have noticed, I'm using the Mammoths to destroy those uh, anti-air, giving my Leviathan more freedom to move around. Now that rocket tower are reaching my porcupines, I'm going to have to pull it back for a moment since you know how porcupines are. They'll always go at the front lines and go Rambo, and we don't really want that to happen. So you always have to uh, 
uh, tap the hold position button and then the formation uh, button to of course you know make them stand still at the back yep there you go GG now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe smash the like button and ring the bell icon to be notified of any content coming from my channel of course leaving a comment down below as to what your feedback and thoughts for this battle would be highly appreciated I'd also highly recommend for you to check out my previous videos as they contain tips tricks that can help you win a battle likewise everyone thank you so much for watching have yourself a great day and good luck with your bets GG